In today's video on neck pain, we are going to be covering two big mistakes that people make when they have neck pain. We're gonna be covering the structure on the neck and talking about a few of those pictures on the board behind me and using the spine to demonstrate so you can see exactly what we're talking about and really visualize it and how it all is all working in your body, especially if you've got neck pain. We're gonna talk a little bit about the structure and how it's influenced nowadays, particularly in those that are younger. We're also gonna talk about some of those injuries that can occur in this part of the neck and how they may have similarities between the lower back as well or with the lower back as well. Well. And then as always, we're gonna try and make this video as helpful as possible for you watching so you've got something to take away. We're gonna talk through two awesome neck exercises that bear all of this in mind that are really gonna help you not only maintain a good healthy neck, but also if you're in a bit of trouble, if you've got a herniated disc or a bulging disc or you've got some damage in that neck, some irritation and some arthritis, it's gonna help you too. So let's get into today's video. So first, let's get the mistakes out of the way because you want me to stop doing these things. And even if sometimes they feel a little bit nice, and these are two exercises that are so commonly prescribed. You've probably seen 10 to 15 different videos on YouTube that have explained how to do these. They're very, very simple. One is the chin retraction, the chin tuck, and that is from the side, taking our chin and pulling it back like so, pulling it as if we're a, a little abacus ball and we've got a rod going straight through our head and we're just going straight backwards. That's number one. And we're gonna explain why these are in a moment. So just bear with us as we go through these. The second one is going to be the classic, grab the head and pull it down here or pull it off to the side, but going forwards, putting that flexion. Now, what do these two things have in common? They both are instilling more and more flexion through the cervical spine. And that is the problem. Now, we're gonna come back to those two exercises in a moment and why they're a problem. But first, let's talk on the board about the structure of the neck and what tends to happen when we get injured and use this spine as well. On the neck, what we've got here is we've got two drawings. Both drawings of the neck are facing that way. So if I turn around and face that way for you guys, you can see that the curve is coming in the neck. We should have a position like this. This is a representation of what we should have. Now, these little lines here, these, those are the base of the skull. And you can see that in this example, the normal, that's why it's got a green little marker next to it. We can see the neck comes forwards and forms a nice smooth curve. We can notice that the top of the curve is over the bottom of the curve, which means that if we were to press down on this neck, we can imagine that it would accentuate at the curve, the curve would increase as it's load bearing, as it's shock absorbing. Now, we don't have the muscles drawn on here, but a quick Google search on the musculature of the neck will allow you to see this a little bit better. But there is a huge amount of support in the neck here. We've got a strong ligament coming on the front here, lots and lots of muscles on the back here to stop it going forwards and to resist that motion. Very, very powerful to maintain that nice neutral curve. Obviously, we haven't got those in there, but they're creating this effect of a bowstring. What we've got is we've got the bow, the wooden part of the bow here, and the string being the muscles to maintain that nice shape. Now, if we go over to the abnormal neck, and you have to bear in mind that there is a transition that occurs going from this position to this position. We can actually see that the neck curve is straight and if not a little bit going the wrong way. So instead of being bent backwards, it's actually going forwards. And I'm not gonna break the spine here because we need to use this later. So you can visualize it here. But what we notice here again is that the top of the neck is over the bottom of the neck in this instance. It might not always be, it might be jutting forwards. And in both scenarios, there's much more complexity this, to, to this picture than, um, than what we're just going through here. But this is the, the top. We'll have, probably have other videos where we go into this in much, much more detail, but this gets you the idea. The point being the top is over the bottom here as well. But if we were to press down on this neck, what all of a sudden starts to happen is it bends just like the other one did, it accentuates the curve. So if it's already bending forwards, it's going to curve the wrong way, driving a lot of pressure through this disc in a way that the neck simply isn't built to maintain, isn't built to resist. The neck is built to be in this structure. We have all of the supporting musculature, the supporting ligaments in uh, with, with, with this structure in mind. Once we start having to resist these sorts of motions on a day in day out basis, we start to get problems arising. What we also get in this particular position here is a process called mechanical disadvantage. And what that means is when the muscles in this position have to run from A to B, and if I just use my hand to demonstrate here for a moment, well if the spine curve is here and the muscles are running from A to B and the neck is nice and curved as it should be in this green image here, then the muscles are in a relatively shorter position. But when that spine straightens out, 
all of a sudden the muscles run over a greater distance, let alone if it actually bends the other way. And what that means is that those muscles are under a position of mechanical disadvantage, i.e. they are weaker in that position. And this is where those symptoms of tension in the neck start to creep in, and that creates a problem. Now, what we're talking about is tension creeping into those muscles because they are being stretched out under the normal status quo as opposed to in a nice resting position where they're mechanically strong. Now if you've been in the gym, you've ever lifted any weights, you're going to find that if we hold our bicep here in a shortened position, we're very, very strong. But if we hold it out here, we're a lot weaker in the bicep because the muscle is elongated. And that's what happens in this position here. The muscles get weak and therefore they have to be tighter on a daily basis to maintain things. And that's where, if we go back to those initial stretches that we mentioned, the very first one, pulling the chin towards the chest to stretch out these muscles, is actually, yes, it's stretching them out, but is it doing the right thing? And we see this very similarly in the lower back when we talk about things like knee hugs. It does something, it stretches the muscles out, but is that really what we need? The final thing to talk about with this, before we go into the other areas of the video today, is looking at the spaces between the vertebra at the back. We have ligaments that really maintain this curve. It's not the muscles that maintain the curve, it's the ligaments. It's a very passive process. And you can see on the spine here that there are small gaps between each of these vertebral units. There are small gaps where those ligaments go, just like in this position here. And then when we get into a position like so, you see those gaps larger out, they expand out. So if we go like so, and we move into that position there, now the ligaments are stretched. Now if that's the status quo, if that's like that on a daily basis, we start to get again more instability in these ligaments because these ligaments don't contract. The ligaments are passive, they're just their set length. But over time, they can remodel. And that is gonna lead lovely, in a lovely way into the next part of the video. So the interesting thing about ligaments is that they respond to stress and strain. They are designed to stretch a little bit, otherwise we wouldn't be able to go from this position into a flex position. And I can clearly do that right now. I can move my neck. So the ligaments must have some giving them, but they remodel. And what that means is when placed under sustained stretch for extended periods, and you're talking 10 to 15 minutes, 20 minutes of sustained stretch, i.e. in the same position for a long period of time, they start to remodel and they start to lose their integrity and they don't just remain in their set position like so. They start to migrate towards this position. And you could do that one for a one-off, but nowadays we have those smartphones, we have tablet computers, we have sitting like this for hours on end playing on games on our phone. We have all those sorts of things which are sitting us very easily in that position there for an extended period of time, well beyond 20 minutes, for, period, for consecutive days, if not weeks, if not months and years at a time. And what you are seeing, interestingly enough, is that younger people, especially children and teenagers, as they're going through their natural process, they're spending more time on these devices. So you're seeing objectively slightly worse necks in a younger person, say in their, uh, from, from their teen years, 20s and 30s, than you are in their parents who are a little bit older and have grown up in an environment where at least when they were developing, they were looking up and about and playing with other children and doing things in this level rather than down like so, looking on the, at the ground all the time. So although we may see, if we took a sample of children or teenagers now and, and those in their 20s, and we took a sample of those a little bit older, let's say in their 50s and 60s, we might see that the degree to which this is happening in those that are younger is much, much greater. Yes, the older group may have a bit more in the way of degeneration, but you are seeing that this sort of thing setting in place. And that doesn't necessarily mean those segments are injured. We have to bear that in mind. However, if they're like this, this is not balanced. And when something does eventually go, when we have a bit too much strain, when that repetitive strain of more pressure clearly going through the discs and the vertebral bodies starts to become a little bit too much, and then we have a little sudden jolt or a sudden funny movement, and we damage some of that disc, now we've got a structure that is bearing weight in a much, much less mechanically efficient manner than the natural supported structure. And that's when we run into real trouble, when we talk about herniated discs, bulging discs, the inflammation that builds up, in this region here that causes those trapped nerves, etc. That's when we can get into a lot more trouble. Now the thing with those sorts of conditions where we get some bulging discs, some herniated discs, etc., is that unfortunately, when the neck is in this sort of position, we are putting more pressure on that same structure that has become injured. 
on a day in day out basis. And therefore the neck is constantly like this all the time. And what that means is when that inflammation builds up and starts to occupy these little holes where the nerves come out, it becomes very difficult for us to actually even bring the head back up to a straight neutral position. It becomes so difficult because as we do that, we close those little holes where the nerves exit. I'll show you quickly on the lumbar spine because on the model it's a little bit more difficult to see because it's all congested. But as we're in that flex position, you can see this hole where the nerve comes out is larger. And if you're in this position all the time, inflammation builds up in that little hole to a point where it reaches a maximum. It's very difficult for us to then return back to a normal neutral position like so because that inflammation in there is preventing us doing so without pain and then we get sharp shooting pain and we think oh gosh i have to bend forwards more but the process of bending that neck forwards more this leads to more pressure on the disc which then leads to more inflammation and we just get stuck in this sort of position where we just simply can't straighten up and this is very very debilitating now the second thing we see is when this posture this sort of a, a picture symptom picture is in a uh, uh, ingrained way in the body, we start to see that degenerative change starts to take place around the areas that are under most pressure consistently because the body knows there's too much pressure there, so it's trying to spread the load. So we get those osteophytes starting to develop. We get those bony spurs. We get the consistent pressure. The fact that this is always bending forwards and never alleviating, this neck never goes back into a neutral position like so on a daily basis because as I mentioned at the start of this video, this part here and this part here, the person looks overtly from the surface like they're standing with good posture. When they stand up, they can. But underneath the neck, when we zoom in on an x-ray, we can actually see that their neck alignment is completely different. And how do these two people look the same from the surface? It's very, very difficult to get your head around. But this is becoming more and more common uh, that, uh, in, in, in sort of recent years. But the, the consequences of this is that we're day in day out putting more pressure through these discs and we start to get those bony spurs forming. We start to get that degeneration of the disc space in here and we start to get that wear and tear developing. And what happens when the disc space is dropped? If we had a nice spacer like so, a nice healthy disc between two vertebral units, that's keeping the hole where the nerve comes out, which is on the back here, that's keeping that nice and large. If that drops by 50%, so does the hole. The hole gets smaller. And now if we get a minor tweak in this area, this is for those of you that maybe have a little bit of degeneration in the neck. Now this hole is smaller. The same little tweak that might not have caused so much trouble for you when you had a nice big disc space is now gonna give you a little bit more symptoms. It's gonna give you a little bit more irritation. Maybe it's gonna give you some nerve symptoms down the arm into the hand. It's going to generally be a more unpleasant process even if the injury itself, the minor disc strain, the little ligament strain around there isn't as severe as a raging disc herniation. So we've been through that very, very briefly and hopefully it is starting to hit a few points home, a few light bulbs are going off. We are gonna have more videos that go into detail on this specific area and other areas of the neck that are gonna help you better understand. So if you do find those, er those things interesting and helpful, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now, if we circle back, because you might've been forgiven for thinking that actually that exercise there, that chin tuck, pulling the chin in, or the chin tuck like so, would be a good thing. Because it's making the hole bigger, isn't it? It's making that hole bigger when I flex forwards. But hopefully by now you've understood a little bit that actually on here, it's compressing these discs more. It's maybe making the underlying problem worse, much like a knee hug in the case of lower back pain. We're pulling that disc in, we're stretching the back part of that vertebra out to make the hole bigger, but we're not really addressing the cause of the problem. If anything, we're making that worse and stretching those tissues that are trying to move from here back to here and provide some integrity to the cervical spine. Now, what are we gonna do? Or what simple exercises can we do that are gonna really help this and start to think more about supporting a normal and optimal position rather than making a bad position worse? So if you've seen any of our lower back videos, you'll know that we like these towels because everybody has them at home or most people do anyway and uh, what we can do is we can roll them up and I'm just doing that now you saw the size of the towel it's a relatively small one uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to use this to support the natural curve because if we can get that curve into a better position pop this behind the neck here lying on the floor if we can support that sort of position even if we're in something like this we can start to open out those disc spaces again we can start to take pressure off those structures again. 
We can start to give these muscles here that are being pulled apart every single moment of every single day. We can give them a little bit of respite again. Because when we do a chin tuck, all we do, if we grab the spine, all we do is take a bad neck position and just pull it back. There is no control. We cannot take a segment, let's say the C5-6 segment in here. We cannot bend about that point until we get on to exercise number two. But using the towel allows us to place the towel in the nape of the neck, support that curve, and just take some pressure off the injured structures when you're in trouble. Now, if we've got particularly bad neck pain, if we've been struggling with this for a long period of time, and if we've got a particularly severe episode of inflammation, you will find almost certainly that the process of taking your neck from that position and lying over the towel, as I just mentioned, and getting it to go back into a more neutral position will be one that is uncomfortable. And it's one that you're gonna to have to ease yourself into. It's gonna take a bit of time and it'll be difficult to get off. And we do have guidance, although we're gonna be redoing some of those videos to give you guys a little bit more detailed instruction on how to do this exercise and how to get off on and off the towel safely. So make sure you do subscribe to the channel so you can see when those videos get released or just go onto the channel and search in neck exercises or something like that and you're gonna find it there. But this is a very, very important exercise that you can do. And I've started with the second one first because it's just so important. Because what it does is as you lie over the, over the towel, you stretch out some of these disc spaces and open out the segment in a natural, normal position. If we've sprained or broken a finger, some of the ligaments in the finger, let's say doing some sort of combat sport, and our finger's bending off to the side or it's crooked, what do we do? We don't fix the, fix the finger in a bad position, crook it off to the side like that. When we're trying to encourage it to heal, we fix it in its neutral resting position so that as the ligaments heal, although we've strained this one, they heal in a neutral position. They heal with that integrity that is designed back. They don't heal off to the side. So we want to try when we have injuries to put the spine for a period of the day. And in this, with this exercise, we do it two, three, four, five minutes, although you may start only with maybe 20, uh, 20 seconds, 30 seconds at a time. But we want to try and put that body back into the best possible position so it can heal in the best possible position. And that's a, a, a principle or a premise that's observed in more or less all injuries. We would never leave them in the worst possible position. In cases where people have severe bone damage, they'll often reset or work to reset that position to get it back in the right one. So why not do the same with our neck when it's so very easy to do? As I said, it might be a bit of a challenge for you if you're in a particularly acute episode, but there are little strategies and tweaks that you can do to make it a little bit easier on yourself when you're in that scenario. So exercise number two involves a band, a strong band. You can also use the towel for this one as well, but I would suggest you do this one first. And what we do is we take this band and what we're looking to do is put it around the center point of the neck. Now, if you've got any x-ray imaging, if you understand the full alignment of your spine or anywhere there, where there is significant misalignment of the spine, and I talk, I say significant, not insignificant, because the two sometimes insignificant changes are uh, put upon patients as if they are significant when they're not. So we're talking about significant changes in the spine. You can see that's pretty significant. We could do numbers here as well, but we won't in this video because we won't go into that much detail. But we want this to be in the middle part of the neck because that's where the apex is the curve is. And you remember earlier I said with the chin tuck, we can't create a pivot. Well, that's what this is for. Because if we get this band, we make it strong. I'm gonna double loop it here. You could always wrap a towel around to make it more comfortable. And we pop that in the middle portion of the neck and just simply pull forwards. We now have that fulcrum. And now we can focus extension-based movement to a segment or a region of the neck, the middle portion of the neck here. Commonly it's gonna be C5, C6 discs that are injured, C6, C7 discs that are injured. We're talking about herniated and bulging and degenerate in particular. It's less common that we get that sort of degenerative change happening at the upper part of the neck and there's reasons for that due to mobility of that part of the neck. But we come down here and we just go into a gentle movement, just providing a little bit of tension so that we can pull forwards and create that fulcrum that we spoke about earlier on the spine. That fulcrum here and just gently pulling forwards and that it creates a pumping action, opening up these disc spaces and just getting the neck to move a little bit better. Again, if this is a particularly acute episode for you right now and you're really struggling to move at all, you're like that robot position, then this might be a little bit more difficult for you to start with. So go gently. But combining 10 or 15 pumps of this with the towel exercise that I just mentioned for two or three minutes, three or five minutes, and doing that multiple times a day with 
the use of a bit of ice to just get that inflammation under control so we're a little bit less reactive is something that really, really, really will start to help you take a bit of pressure off this bad neck, take a bit of pressure off that bulging disc, take a bit of pressure off that segment that's got the trapped nerve. And then you're going to need to do some strengthening work to these muscles in this region to provide that long-term uh, long protection. Just like we do in the Back and Shape program for the lower back, we wanna do some pr practices and some procedures that provide relief, the towel being one of them in the lower back as well. But we also need to do some strengthening work around this neck simultaneously, or as soon as is possible, to start to provide a little more protection for the neck. And to the degree we have any alignment abnormalities, we want to provide more protection sooner because those muscles are going to have to do more work to stabilize this because it's not balanced and as good as this at, at absorbing shock and taking that strain of daily life. We want to get those muscles stronger. And also there's obviously that mechanical disadvantage that we mentioned earlier on. So those muscles are not only weaker in many cases, but they're also disadvantaged mechanically because of the position that they're in. So this has been a bit of an overview video. We've talked about a lot of different topics. We've touched on a few areas and maybe we could have gone into more detail on those as well, but that is why we're doing a couple of videos on this particular topic. So if you do find this one helpful, make sure you do subscribe to the channel. Make sure you, if you did find it useful, give us a thumbs up so we know you find this content interesting on the neck. It's not something we've done in a while. Uh, talking about the neck. Predominantly, we're sticking on that lower back. So we will be coming out with a few more videos. So if you're subscribed to the channel and you've got that notification bell hit, you'll know when those get released. And remember, you can always comment in the comment section below if you've got any specific questions, any curiosities about what we've discovered or we, what we've covered today, and maybe you've discovered today uh, on the board or any of the other parts of this video. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in another video soon.